Hi guys, in today's video I would like to show you and talk about Bluetooth Low Energy Protocol. Uh, this protocol is quite different from the Bluetooth Classic one. And uh, the first project I would like to talk about is this uh, is for this STM32 board, which has uh, JDY08 uh, Bluetooth Low Energy module on it, or Bluetooth 4.0 and uh, this board is capable of receiving and sending uh, the messages as well as turning the LED on or off and this project is written in C and the second project I would like to talk about is written in Java for this uh, Android phone and this app is capable of connecting uh, to some Bluetooth low energy device and sending and receiving uh, the messages. So in this case, I can turn the LED on or off. And I can see uh, the received messages, which is up uh, in here on the screen uh, of this app. And uh, now it says the LED is on. And in this case, it says the LED is off. And uh, I can also type something in something random to this uh, text field and send it and I've just received what I typed in so in case uh, this board uh, receives some random message it doesn't understand uh, it just uh, sends it back so that's what this uh, app does and uh, in case uh, of this Android app, uh, you need to have uh, turned on your Bluetooth and also your location because uh, when you want to use your Bluetooth uh, low energy protocol, uh, it's the Android thing from Google that you need to also have uh, your location to be turned on. In case you don't, uh, just this uh, Bluetooth Low Energy protocol won't work. So keep that in mind. So let's get started and let's have a look at this STM32 board. And let's get started with this one. Okay, so let's start with this STM32 board, which has JDY08 Bluetooth Low Energy module in it. This uh, module is powered by 3.3 volts and has UART peripheral, which default baud rate is 115,200 bouts or bits per second. And I have also connected its reset to GPIO output of uh, this STM32 board. So let's have a look uh, at this GPIO configuration. Uh, I have configured this PC13 uh, to toggle the LED and this LED uh, is uh, turned off when the GPIO level is high and when you toggle it to low value uh, the LED is on and uh, I keep this Bluetooth low energy module in reset by default and uh, this PC14 is configured uh, to toggle the reset pin uh, of the Bluetooth module and I have also enabled this timer. Uh, it is configured to 20 milliseconds and I launch the global interrupt every 20 milliseconds. I'm going to explain this uh, later in the code. And uh, I have also configured this UART where uh, I have also enabled this global interrupt and I have configured uh, it to the same speed as boot low energy has. It is 115,200 bits per second or about. And uh, this clock configuration is basically set to high, the, to the highest uh, clock. So that's basically it. So let's have a look uh, at this code. I just let initialize uh, these peripherals, then I wait 200 milliseconds, then I set uh, the reset pin to high value, which lets uh, the Bluetooth low energy module to boot up. So that's why I wait one second. And then I clear the buffer, 
start the timer and enable uh, this UART interrupt. And my library contains uh, this buffer and two variables. And uh, this string compare just compares uh, the strings and when they perfectly match, it returns one. And if they don't match, uh, it returns zero. And this message handler basically calls this uh, string compare function. And if uh, the message says LED on, it turns the LED on and sends uh, back the message. The LED is on. And uh, in this case, it does the same uh, for LED off. So it turns off the LED and sends back the message. And in case I don't receive uh, any of these uh, messages, LED on or off, I just add the there end of uh, line character. And uh, then I just basically send back the message. Then I clear the buffer, I clear or reset the variables and go on. And when I receive the messages via UART, I just uh, write uh, them one by one, uh, one character by one character into buffer. And uh, if the last character received uh, was end of line uh, character, then I launch the message handler. But in case something uh, already was received, and I haven't received uh, end of line character. For this reason, I have added here this timer where I check if the buffer is uh, empty or not. And if the buffer is not empty, I just start counting up the timer count. And if it's more than 100 milliseconds, because this timer is set up to 20 milliseconds, after 100 milliseconds, I assume that uh, nothing uh, will be more received because it is just uh, way too long for uh, the UART to uh, at this speed to just uh, send a message. So these messages uh, take just a few milliseconds to send. So after 100 milliseconds, I just launch this message handler. So this message handler is launched uh, from these two places, from UART interrupt and from this timer interrupt. And that's basically it. So this project is almost the same as was in case uh, of Bluetooth Classic module. So this is Bluetooth Low Energy module. And in my previous video, I have talked about Bluetooth Classic or 2.0 uh, protocol. And uh, these STM projects uh, were basically the same, except uh, the speed of UART, because this one has default baud rate 115,200 bouts, and this one has 9,600 bouts. So that was only the speed difference between uh, these two projects. But uh, let's have a look uh, at this uh, Android code for this Android app. And uh, this project is going to be uh, totally different. So let's continue with this uh, Android app example. So I have tried to keep this as simple as possible. So I have picked up one of these uh, Android uh, sample projects. And I have picked up uh, this one, Bluetooth Low Energy Get project, which contains uh, two activities. The first one is this scan activity, Bluetooth low energy scan activity. And uh, I have modified this just a little. So basically when you hit the scan button, it scans the uh, devices and I have added a function uh, where it tries to detect uh, the name of the device and when it detects uh, the JDY08 Bluetooth low energy module, it automatically connects to it. So currently I have this uh, unplugged, so it's turned off. And uh, this app isn't able to find uh, this Bluetooth Low Energy device, so it uh, doesn't connect to any. But uh, I have kept the on-click listener, so when you click uh, and pick up one of these devices, it tries to connect. 
but it doesn't contain this uh, Bluetooth low, low energy module, so it uh, doesn't connect at all. So uh, this is how the second uh, activity looks like by default, so it's quite empty. So let's have a look at the code. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, you just don't need to add uh, permissions uh, for Bluetooth, but you also need some permission at least for course location or just uh, to find location. So you need at least uh, one permission, uh, otherwise your Bluetooth low energy protocol won't work. And I have also decided to lock this uh, screen orientation to portrait. So when you rotate the device, it keeps it stays the same. Even though I have enabled on my Android phone the screen orientation to rotate, but for this app it is locked. So one uh, screen orientation is for this uh, device scan activity and the second orientation is also set to uh, device control activity. So in layout, I have put everything into constraint layout and I have added a bunch of buttons. So that's basically it. And uh, in this scan activity, oh, in this scan activity, uh, I have uh, added this uh, check course location uh, permission function. Uh, which speaks for itself. So uh, at the beginning, when you launch your application, it checks uh, if you have enabled your course location. But keep in mind that you need to manually turn on your location on your device. So it just checks uh, if you have enabled your permission, but it doesn't check if you have actually enabled your uh, location on your device. So you need to have to be turned on so I can try to turn off this location so only the Bluetooth uh, is turned on and uh, the Android itself uh, has a problem now so it's not able to find any of these devices so it uh, doesn't find any because of the disabled location and when I turn on the location, it suddenly finds uh, some devices. So it is a matter of enabling the location. So at the bottom uh, of this code, I have added uh, another function, which is called autoconnect. And uh, when I scan uh, these devices, I try to check the name. And if it says JDY08, which is this Bluetooth Low Energy module on this STM32 board. It automatically connects. And uh, in this project, uh, in this code, I have this uh, receive buffer uh, string, which is initialized as empty. And over here, uh, I just try to receive my messages. And uh, I just add up all the packets and all the messages I received until it contains uh, end of line character and afterwards uh, it uh, contains uh, this character uh, I just remove it and uh, then I launch this uh, message handler and this one just plots the uh, string that I have just received so that's basically it and afterwards I just clear the buffer so that's basically it. And uh, to send uh, the data, I have also modified this write characteristic. So uh, this is the custom UUID for this JDY08 Bluetooth low energy module. So this is how I try to send the data. And uh, it is called uh, in this function so when i uh, hit the button send i just uh, get the text from the 
uh, edit text message from this uh, from that uh, window, and uh, then I just send uh, the text, and uh, I just set the text to empty again. So this is what I actually do. Uh, and when I click on the button on, uh, it sends the command to turn the LED on. Or when I click on the button off, it uh, sends command to turn the LED off. So that's basically it. So I hope uh, this project example was uh, slightly explained. But don't be afraid to play with this code. Everything is available on my GitHub page. So it is uh, over here. So I have already uploaded uh, project examples for Bluetooth Classic, which is on my last video or in my previous video. And I have also uploaded uh, this Bluetooth Low Energy example for Android and STM32. So uh, all these Bluetooth uh, examples are currently available. So that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. Bye.